in this video, we'll be trying to name this organic compound. So we have this compound here, and we are asked to provide the name of this compound. Now, for most persons, they will just go straight to saying this one here is a substituent, and this one here is also a substituent, but that will be wrong. Why? Because when it comes to naming compounds, there are certain rules or certain laws that governs the way you name organic compound. Now, the first rule in naming com organic compound is that you should identify the longest continuous carbon chain. All right. Identify the longest continuous carbon chain. And to identify the longest con continuous carbon chain, you have to be able to draw out the given structure in full. Let's draw out this given structure in full. First thing, we have four carbon atoms in a straight chain. One, two, three, four. So I'll draw these four carbon atoms. From here, I would have one, two, three, four. Now observe that each of these carbon atoms are bounded by hydrogen here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'll draw these six hydrogen atoms. From here, I would have this as one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm done with this part. The next part here, down here, you can see we have one carbon atom and three hydrogen atom. So let's draw this out. So this becomes here, I have one carbon and three hydrogen. One, two, and three. So this is how you get CH3. That's how you got CH3 here. All right. Next up, at this point, I have one hydrogen downwards. So I'll just come here and write the hydrogen here. Add this there. Okay. Next up, we can see that here we have two carbon atoms and five hydrogen. So let's add that. Two carbon atoms. So from here, I'm just going to draw a straight line down. Okay. So... From here, I'll draw this down. One, draw this down. Two, then we have five hydrogen. One, two, three, four. Then one final one, we have this as five. So this is now C2H5. That's this one here. All right, that's C2H5. What's the next task? That the final thing here is that this particular carbon here is attached to one hydrogen. So just go straight to writing that um, this atom here, this carbon attached to, towards the one hydrogen. So we have this. Now, in, after doing this, we, now with this, we've, we've drawn out the full structure of the given compound. Let's get the longest continuous carbon chain. Now, in getting the longest continuous carbon, carbon chain, we can see that if we name this as carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, like this, we just have five carbon um, chains. Right, but if I start this way, I can go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, with this, you can see that you now have six carbon chains. You can pause this video and see if you can count any other longer carbon chain. With this, you can see that you won't be able to get a longer carbon chain than this. So, in essence, we have six carbon chains, and six, as we know, whenever you have six carbon atoms. In a, in a chain, uh, we call it a hex. So six is hex. So rule one, get the longest continuous carbon chain. That's six carbon atoms, right, in a single chain. That gives you hex. Rule two is that we should identify the functional group. By functional group, we will look for single bond, double bond, triple bond, OH, as the case may be. Now, looking at this compound, you can see that we have just single bond throughout. So since we have just single bond, what we have that is an alkane, all right? So we'll now take the A and E. So combining hex with A and E, we have a hexane. All right, so this becomes a hexane. That's rule two. Um, next up again, we'll now, we'll now see that apart from these six carbon atoms, there are actually seven carbon atoms in total. There's one here, which we did not count. Now, any carbon atom not part of the parent's carbon atom, the parent's carbon atom are simply these atoms here, the, the carbon atom that form... Um, your hex is that the, so what you have here represents the parent carbon atom so these ones here these carbon atoms here represent the um parent carbon atom so we have this bring this down and then bring this way 
All right. So any carbon not part of this six is called a substituent. So hence, we consider this particular carbon here as a substituent. If we write, if we should write this one here in this molecular formula state, what we have there is one carbon. That's C. You have one, two, three. Three hydrogen attached to it. That's H3. All right. So it becomes one carbon, three hydrogen. That's CH3. And CH3, as we know, is a substituent of the alkyl group known as methyl. So CH3 is actually methyl. So we have this. All right. Now, if you're confused with all of this, I've prepared a course on organic chemistry that would help you in naming compounds. Okay. I'll leave a link to the course on organic chemistry in the video description. Okay. So you can check out the organic chemistry playlist so you can see how you name compounds in details. Now, proceeding with this, we have methyl here. Again, observe that methyl is attached to this particular carbon here. All right. So you can see here that this methyl here, this methyl, what you have here, is attached to this particular carbon here. And if you look at the number on the carbon there, the number is actually three. You can see this is three. That means methyl is attached to the third carbon or carbon three, as you can see here. So if you want to write the name of this, it becomes the number first, which is three. Then the substituent attached is what there? Methyl, as we said. So it becomes three hyphen methyl. Okay. You separate a number from an alphabet using what's there? A hyphen. So it becomes three methyl. Three methyl what? We had six carbon. We called it a hex. So it became hex because we had six carbon. And then from the functional group, we can see that it was a he hexane. Okay. All right. It's methyl. Okay. Was a hexane so it becomes three methyl hexane so the name of this compound is three methyl hexane that's how you name this compound okay all right guys so i've prepared a course on organic chemistry on my website which teaches everything you need to know about the different um the different homologous series in organic chemistry from the alkanes to the alkenes the alkynes the alcohols the ether the esters the amines, the amines, etc. For each of the homologous series, I talked about their nomenclature, their preparation, and their reactions for us. All right. To gain access to this organic chemistry class, simply visit my website www.jonaimari.com forward slash courses and then and then get the organic chemistry course, or you can simply join the organic chemistry membership group. All right. Okay, guys. If you enjoyed this video as usual, do well to hit the like button, right? So like this video. Also leave a comment. Now for your comments, I want to give you a compound. What if for this compound here, you had this? What if for this compound here, you had nine? All right, so let's say you had C4H9 here. Can you try to name this compound? What would be the name of this compound if this was C4H9? Alright, leave the answer in the comment section and I'll tell you if you're correct. Oh, okay. All right, so let's say you had C4H9 here. What do you think will be the name of this compound? Leave your answer in the comment section and I'll tell you if you're correct. Okay. Alright, guys. So leave your answer as a comment in this comment section there. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If it's your first time or you're yet to subscribe, please do well to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. So that you get notified whenever we upload new content and then finally share this video to your friends so that they can also learn thank you and see you in our next class